Hi everyone, in this lesson we want to look at how we solve radical equations that require squaring a binomial. Now these uh, radical equations involve a little bit more than some of the simple ones we've looked at uh, before this. And the most important thing when solving a radical equation is to always begin by first isolating the radical uh, all by itself. So in this equation here, I want to get that radical all by itself on one side, okay? So uh, once I do that, if I take the 3 on the other side here, I get x minus 3 is equal to the square root of x minus 1. Then I can begin to unwrap this equation by squaring both sides. And when I square both sides with the radical all by itself, then I, the square will undo that square root and I will get rid of that radical. So I'll get x minus 1 all by himself on the right. And over here when I square this, remember when you square a binomial, you're not going to get just x squared minus 9 or even x squared plus 9. Um, yeah, that's a FOIL problem, right? That's x minus 3 times x minus 3. So that's x squared and do the outers. That's a negative 3x. The inners are another negative 3x. That makes negative 6x plus 9. We have a special product. Remember that, right? I take this x and square it, and then I take the x times the negative 3 is negative 3x and double it. That gives me negative 6x, and then the negative 3 squared is plus 9. All right, so now I've at least gotten rid of the radical, and uh, but I have a quadratic equation, so let's get everything on one side. Let's, let's bring the x over on this side. That'll give me minus 7x, and bring the negative 1 over. That'll give me plus 10, and then I can factor that is x minus 2 times x minus 5. And so then I have x equals 2 or x equals 5. Okay, now remember that these are only potential solutions. Uh, <clears throat> I have to check those to see if they will in fact work. So let's go back up here and we'll plug them in and let's check. All right, so if I check x equals 2, <clears throat> I would get 2 equals the square root of 2 minus 1 plus 3. And I'm wanting to see if that really is equal. Well, it's not going to work, is it? I'm going to get the square root of 1 here, which is 1, and 1 plus 3 is 4, and that doesn't equal 2. All right? So that one doesn't work. So I'm going to have to throw that one out. That's an extraneous solution. Let's try 5. If x is 5, uh, I would get uh, 5. We want to check and see, does that equal the square root of 5 minus 1 plus 3? Well, 5 minus 1 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 plus 3 does equal 5, so that one works. Let's draw a circle around that, and that's my only answer that I have to that equation. All right, now, if there's more than one radical term, let's go on to another example here. Here's one that has two radicals. Then you need to first isolate at least one of the radicals, uh, as we did before, and then and then just uh, proceed as we did, and we'll see that uh, what happens. All right. So in this case, I have two radicals, uh, but I want to get one of those radicals all by himself on one side. So let's go ahead and let's take this negative square root over on the other side, so that this square root is left all by himself. All right. So that's going to give me the square root of z plus 9 is equal to 3 plus the square root of z minus 6. Okay? All right, so now that I've isolated one of those radicals, go ahead and square both sides. When I square this side, the square is going to do, undo the square root, and I'll get z plus 9. Over on this side, I have to be very careful. This is a binomial. When I square that, I'm going to square the 3. That's 9. And then I have to take the 3 times the square root and double it. That gives me 6 square roots of z minus 6. And then I'll square the square root. That gives me z minus 6. All right, now that's the same thing as if I would have just foiled that out, right? Uh, 3 plus the square root of z minus 6 squared means to multiply the 3 plus the square root of z minus 6 by itself. And when you do that, the 3 times the 3 gives you the 9 right here. 
the outers gives you three square roots, the inners give you another three square roots, that's where I got the six square roots of z minus six from, and then when you do the last ones, the square root times the square root makes the square root go away and you just get z minus six. Okay, now <clears throat> notice at this stage I have a z on both sides of the equation. I can go ahead and subtract z from both sides and so that will go away. Notice I could also subtract nine from both sides and that would go away. And I, what I'm doing is I'm going to get this square root here now. I'm basically going to do what I did above. And notice I am better off, right? Uh, originally I had two square roots. Once I square, isolate the radical and square both sides, then I get down to one square root, and then I can just do it again. So let's take this negative 6 that didn't cancel out uh, over on the other side. and I'll divide both sides by 6 at this stage, that'll just make my numbers smaller. That's always nice. Alright, smaller numbers are nicer numbers. So when I do that, I'm going to get 1 on this side is equal to the square root of z minus 6, and then I can just square both sides again. And when I do that, I'll get 1 is equal to z minus 6, and z is equal to 7. All right, let's check it real quick. If I plug in z equals 7, I would get the square root of 7 plus 9 minus the square root of 7 minus 6. And I want to see, does that equal 3? Well, 7 plus 9 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. 7 minus 6 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. And 4 minus 1 does equal 3. So that's going to check for us. Okay, so my solution is just going to be z equals 7. All right, we've got time for one more problem here. This problem is given in terms of a function notation. We have a function g of t equals this square root of t plus 7 minus the square root of t plus 15. And I would like to find the value of t that I could plug into this function so that I get an output of negative 1. All right, so if I plug g, if I plug t into here, I'm going to get the square root of 2t plus 7 uh, minus the square root of t plus 15. Okay, and I want to find the t so that when I plug that in, which gives me this, I want that to equal a negative 1. So notice this is a problem similar to the one we just did where you have two radicals. So I'm again going to go ahead and isolate the radical. I'm going to I'm going to get this one all by himself on one side. So let's go ahead and take this one over on the other side. So I'm going to get the square root of 2t plus 7 is equal to the square root of t plus 15 minus 1. All right. So now that I've isolated this radical on the left, I can square both sides, and that's going to give me 2t plus 7. Over here, I have to square this binomial, so I'm going to square the square root, that gives me t plus 15, and then I have to take this term times a negative 1, that's a negative square root, and double it, that's negative 2 square roots of t plus 15. Again, this is what you'd get if you if you multiplied this by itself, all right, foiled it out. And then when I square the negative 1, I get 1. All right, so now what I want to do is I basically am just going to repeat what I did above. I'm going to isolate this radical, get it all by itself on one side, and uh, and then square both sides again. So let's go ahead and let's take the t over on this side. So if I bring the t over here, I subtract t from both sides, that'll give me t. Uh, I've got a 15 and a 1, that makes 16. So if I bring the 16 over on this side, that would make 7 minus 16, that's a negative 9. And I still have the negative 2 square roots of t plus 15 left over here. Okay, so let's, uh, now that I've isolated this radical, let's square both sides again. And let's see what we get there. All right, so if I square the t minus 9, that's going to give me t squared. And then the t times a negative 9, that's negative 9t. And if I double that, that's negative 18t plus 81. And over on this side, if I square the negative 2, that'll give me 4. And if I square the square root, I'll just get the t plus 15. 
that's under the square root. All right, so let's come up here, have a little more room. I got uh, t squared minus 18t plus 81 equals 4t plus 60. When I distribute that 4 through, let's get my terms on one side. t squared minus 22t plus 21 equals 0. So I can factor that now as t minus 21 times t minus 1. And so my t is either going to be 21 or 1. Again, once again, these are just potential solutions. I have to check and see if uh, both of them or one of them or neither of them is, is going to work out. So let's, let's check. So if I check the t equals uh, 21, I would have the square root of 2 times 21. That's going to give me 42. 42 plus 7 is 49. And then I'll subtract the square root of 21 plus 15. And the question is, does that equal negative 1? All right. So this is the square root of 49. That was 7. This is the square root of 36. That's 6. And 7 minus 6, oops, 7 minus 6 does not equal negative 1, does it? Okay. So that one's not going to work out. Let's try t equals 1. If t is equal to 1, I would get the square root of 2 times 1 plus 7, so that's the square root of 9, minus the square root of 1 plus 15. The question is, does that equal negative 1? Well, this is the square root of 9 is 3, and this is the square root of 16, that's 4, and 3 minus 4 does equal negative 1, so that one's going to work. Okay. So t equals 1 is the only solution uh, that's going to work on that equation.